Hey, today we're going to talk about what options there are for mobile app development. Um, if you want <clears throat> to uh, develop apps for iOS, you have the native options of developing in Objective-C or Swift. Um, historically, there was Objective-C and in 2014 there was Swift, which is a, in my regard, uh, a more modern and more easy to work with language and it has quickly become more of a standard for native iOS development and um, it has been it's now up into Swift 4 and there have been quite a lot of development since 2014. If you want to go for Android native you have historically the Java option and then there is the Kotlin option for Android development which is actually it's been around for a while but just last summer uh, Google said that they supported Kotlin as a uh, first-class language for Android development and it looks like Kotlin is moving strongly ahead <clears throat> but I would think that it would take a little bit longer time than if we compare it to Swift for taking over. So um, Kotlin is moving ahead and Kotlin and Swift are pretty close in what they look like and how they function. But if we want to go for um, some kind of cross-platform um, solution, we have a few options. One of them is uh, Xamarin. Uh, it's been around for a while and was bought by Microsoft, which has changed the direction a little bit. Here we have the option to build apps for iOS and Android and for Windows, of course, in C Sharp. So here you can build a common code base for um, iOS and Android, and then write code in um, C Sharp, the UI part uh, for the different platforms. So you got a bunch of shared logic code and classes and models and things that are common. And then you can build up the UI the way you do it in native iOS and build it in Interface Builder and for Android you build it up with the same way you do in native Android. So, but you have the, the common part in, um, in C Sharp. And <clears throat> then you have actually the, the, the native parts are uh, actually they map to the native functions so you're gonna have a UI table view in iOS and you have a function for um, number of rows and things like that and for Android you have your recycle view and things like that so so that's one way to build it then Xamarin has a uh, thing called Xamarin Forms where they have their own layout language. So you have your common business logic and, and models and classes and things like that. And then they also have a shared UI. So then you build up things like this. Here you say in uh, XAML code, here you say, here's a tabbed page, and this contains these things, and here is a, um, an entry, which is a uh, thing for here, for adding text. So this is the exact same um, UI code, which results in for all the three platforms. That's a big, a big positive thing. On the negative side, if you do want to do things that differ, let's say you want to add Bluetooth capabilities 
then you're gonna have to add uh, Bluetooth for iOS, Bluetooth for Android, and so forth. And that could be a little bit more uh, work than just if you built that Bluetooth thing natively. So you have to weigh in that perhaps building some parts will be more easily and and then some parts perhaps will be additional work because you have to do it not only do you have to do it natively for iOS, native for Android, you also have to glue those parts together with the other um, parts of the app. <clears throat> and so here we have building cross-platform apps in C Sharp. Another thing is React Native, which comes from Facebook. And here we have a thing where you build apps based on JavaScript. And here, like in Xamarin, when you write code, you just map to the native uh, functions. So when you say, give me a button, you get an UI button in iOS. So they don't uh, have some kind of own uh, components. React Native, same thing. With React Native, you don't build a mobile web app or an HTML5 app or a hybrid app. You build real mobile apps. So, same thing here. When you say build up UI here, when you say give me a scroll view, give me an image, or give me a text, like here, on iOS, React Native Scroll View uses a native UI, a UI scroll view. On Android, it uses a native scroll view. So, a little bit common like Xamarin Forms. So here, when you say, give me a scroll view, give me an image, it generates the native UI components. So here you can share a lot of code and share a lot of UI. <clears throat> and you have, um, so you can share the, the logic and classes and things like that. And then you can also share the UI parts. And you can also interact with the, um, <clears throat> use the here use native code when you need to so you can create components and here we run into basically the same pros and cons as we did with the Xamarin forms and with Xamarin that sure we write one code base or about one code base but some parts will be needed to be customized for iOS and customized for Android and then also have a glue in part. So it's a weighing off what you need. Another thing um, which is related is Accelerator has a thing called Titanium. It's been around for a while and um, I used to build things more in this earlier and um, was bought up a while back and they keep building on it they have a new thing called Hyperloop where they interact directly with the native API earlier on they had their own thing where you said uh, create a button then it created a UI button on iOS and created a native button on Android but when a new iOS version came out or a new Android version came out then they had to release new SDKs and they lagged behind a bit and it's on like this. Same thing here you build in JavaScript to build their apps and you have the ability to create um, components to add in if you need some part in the native code. 
my guess is that they're a bit scaling back popularity wise react native quite popular so all of these samarin react native um, titanium they all create native controls then there's another option with the phone gap where we have the open source phone gap system then we have adobe have this now uh, phone gap is where you build web that gets packaged as an app and where we have some parts where it's uh, made for being an app so we can build some javascript that talks to uh, the phone components and things like that and we can add um, native uh, push notifications and we can talk to camera and we can talk to things like that so the on the pro side here we have we can build a ui that is the same for ios and android and windows phone that part and the con is that it is HTML. So when we want to build a UI, you don't get a native UI component, which perhaps won't be a problem and perhaps will be a problem. So, <clears throat> so you get the ease of development to build one, but you have the drawback of having a non-native UI. And here we have, if you already have a, a website or you already have the web stack technology, then just adding in the app is a short step. So that's basically why this exists. Looking forward, we got Kotlin native where we can write Kotlin code and compile it to different things. So we can target and build Kotlin apps for Windows, for Linux, for macOS, for iOS and Android, of course, and also for WebAssembly. We can build things uh, Kotlin for JavaScript. <clears throat> Kotlin native is not stable yet, not out. There are some, some things, some samples and some examples out, but it's still a bit away. But the hope is that we can perhaps write Kotlin for Android and then have some common code written in Kotlin for logic and models and classes and then compile that and just add that to the iOS project and perhaps write that in Swift and then just adding those classes written in Kotlin or perhaps writing the whole thing in Kotlin perhaps so that's worth keeping an eye on moving on if you're just looking for the game part we have unity unity 3d but you can do things in 2d of course and here it's a great game engine um, popular things such as pokemon go is written in unity so it's basically for games and you can do quite a bit with it and you write code in mainly in C sharp for this and you can build things for iOS and Android but also for many different platforms for desktop and for consoles and many different targets so if you're looking for the game part or something graphic intensive it might not be a game but graphic intensive 
Unity could be what you're looking for. And quite related to Unity, we have the Unreal Engine, which is, I would say, basically the same kind of thing. It's a game engine, heavy on the 3D part, and uh, targets many different platforms. You can see here it targets basically every platform there is. They target the web, both of them, iOS and desktop and consoles and everything. We also have the Cocos 2D, which is, as the name implies, a 2D engine for cross-platform game development. And it's uh, quite nice. We have the uh, for building in Python, we have for building in Swift, different different flavors, different uh, in C sharp. It's been around for quite a while, and there are quite a bit of resources for it. So, it's if you're building something in two D, it's worth checking out. Then there are a bunch of other things like Kiwi is a thing for building things in Python and um, you can build the things for mobile and build for iOS and Android and desktop and things that are graphic intensive also being used for things like if you're gonna do a graphical user interface and have a Raspberry Pi and a screen and show stuff Kiwi is a great way to, to build for that. And then there are a whole lot of different kind of tools for building uh, mobile apps. So that's a bit of an overview. If you have your own um, suggestions for uh, tools for building apps, please let us know in the comments. And if you like these short videos, that covers different parts of development. Please subscribe or like the video and it will help us out making more of these. We have a bunch of ideas for upcoming um, videos, but also if you have suggestions for what we're gonna cover, please let us know in the comments.